apparently, you know, some blogger, because of course that's what should be news, um, was talking about how she has vaginal odor from having a ketogenic diet. And I'm like, well, sister, let me tell you, that's probably your worst, like, like, why is this something that you're writing about? Well, because it gets page clicks. Because if you put vagina and something else in a headline, people click on it. Uh, and then people send it to me, and I have to look at it. And I'm like, oh, I have other things to do. So, you know, it's not technically possible that you can change the odor of your vagina with what you eat. I know that everybody believes the pineapple myth. It's a myth. It's not true. Um, and the thing, though, is it just gets back to what I was talking about. All these ideas when we talk about how women's body smell, what we're doing, it's no different than sort of a riff off using Lysol or, you know, steaming your vagina to coax your, you know, rogue womb back into position. This is, you know, puerile and infantile, and I'm not having any of it. And why does nobody care about how the rectums of men smell? Why does nobody care about how a scrotum smells? I mean, really, why is it all about the vagina? I mean, vaginas are super cool, and I'm glad people are into that, but I think it's just really important that when we look about the only part of the body that we talk about smelling, it's almost always a vagina. And that tells me that it's not about odor, and it's about weaponizing words to hurt women in some way, either by selling something, getting page clicks, or making them feel bad about their bodies. And if making people feel bad about vaginas wasn't profitable, we wouldn't have aisles of crap in the drugstore where you go in and odor control and this and that. So, you know, every time you see something about a vaginal odor, it's just a riff on, you know, steaming or Lysol douches and those types of things.